Welcome on a gorgeous sunny afternoon to Sheffield Sports Stadium here at Ullerton for an afternoon of Brisker Formula One stock car racing. The cars are out for race one of this meeting, which is dedicated to Willie Harrison. Willie, the number two driver who suffered a mild heart attack last year and was forced out of racing. We are told that there is a chance of seeing Willie here this afternoon. Let's hope it's in the car. Who knows what might happen as the meeting goes on. Well, the top man in Heat 1 is Dave Beresford, third place in the national points gradings for 1984, and top man here at Sheffield in the seven meetings staged during last year. Beresford from Hyde in Cheshire. There's car number two, indeed. Willie Harrison out for the first race. Willie won the world title after 20 years of trying, almost in, in that case, uh, many, many years of having to uh, struggle through, and eventually got the world title at a very late stage then unfortunately had that uh, heart attack last year that deprived him of further racing good to see him back on the track in the number two car his son Paul is expected in Formula Ones later in the year well as you can see it's a very blustery day despite the uh, blue skies and uh, the rugby posts are moving in the wind quite alarmingly there it's a good job no one's trying to put uh, the ball between those two posts I think uh, they could easily blow out the way of the uh, rugby ball passing over. There's no rugby league here today on this Sunday afternoon at Sheffield. It's firmly Brisker Formula One stock cars. Three heats, consolation, grand final for the Willie Harrison Trophy and a grand national qualifying heat. So with the pit gate having now been fastened, we wait for the race to get underway. Interesting car in the middle of those three with the green flashes down the side is Joe Jopling. That looks like a new car out there for Joe. Jacket, one of the northeastern based drivers formerly under the wing of formerly under the wing of uh, Frankie Wayman but uh, he switched his allegiances recently the white tops now setting off 181 is Jerry Walker also Mick Crocker there we've seen him a couple of times in recent weeks on screen sport Phil Bicknell as well a man that uh, we've caught up with on a couple of occasions 244 just doing Rogers and one white top training a little to the yellows coming past the first turn now. Oh. Four five eight Terry Davis there. Now the, so the blue top, round. just one blue top in his first heat. Thank Keith you. Riley in 328. We're supposed to be three others, Mount Brown, Jim Smith and Jake Wright. Look at what has arrived. Red top's going past. Willie Harris plus two eight six John Tilson, four five two. There's Joe Joplin, and looks like 92 or so, George Braithwaite. Cars coming down onto the home straight here. It's a D-shaped circuit here, though. So not much to a back straight, to a home straight, rather. Uh, one problem already, Phil Bicknell's onto the infield. This first heat gets underway. The first eight go through to the final here. Yellow's in trouble as well. Gary Heap getting caught on the turn. Back wheel spinning helplessly. There's a tyre in the middle of the track as 64 pulls away. There's Joplin and Harrison battling it out, avoiding the number seven car of Phil Bicknell stranded on the inside line. The race leader then, 181, Jerry Walker, the white top going past a couple of the yellows that have been in trouble. That really is now a chicane on that turn. Gary Heap's still in plenty of trouble, almost said heaps of trouble. The two red tops going through, Beresford taking a clout from Joe Joplin, who in turn ends up on the centre green. You may notice that there's a a red and uh, white tape being strung up along the edge of the rugby pitch. They're not supposed to go on there, but uh, I don't think there's much room left on the track at the moment on one of the turns uh, to avoid going onto the pitch. 181. Jerry Walker going through on the inside of car 64. Out top catches his front wheel. Certainly a spectacular action in the opening minutes of this race here. And Willie Harrison getting spun out by John Tilson. So no mercy being shown to Willie in the opening stages, a veteran racer. Good to see him back in racing and uh, taking the rocks. Well, that really is getting confusing there. Terry Davis just pulling out of the trouble in the yellow top 458 car. And there is the overall shot of it with uh, Joe Joplin's car parked on the inside. Three on the outside leaves just about one car width to get the cars through. They have got a very standard yellow flag out <laughs> unmoving yellow now it's being waved it looks indeed as if uh, Jerry Walker in 181 this car is uh, in front of this car in the meantime the drivers get out of the wreckage so they have to go around now in single file with the yellow flag being waved it's 181 just behind him Mick Crocker and Rob Allen in the single file at the moment just behind them, looks like John Toulson. 
And another white before we come to Dave Beresford, Willie Harrison. In the string of yellows and whites as the wreckage is finally cleared. In the meantime, we've lost also the blue top of Keith Riley. Well, I don't know what his comments are on that uh, crash there, but uh, not a very good start to the season here at Sheffield for him. Still makes excellent action. Starter still holding out the yellow. No overtaking. Oh, he's lost his wheel there. That was the wheel that was lost on the track. Keith Riley's car. Well, it looks now as if they may be ready to restart the race very soon. There is a red top out parked on the back straight. And the green is just being hidden behind that yellow flag. There is a yellow flag in front of it as the wind catches it, you can see. So the start is ready to drop the green and get the race back underway. The main question is, though, can that white top of Jerry Walker hold off the challenge of the cars behind because uh, it's all been regulated now. Any margins that were there before have all been reduced or in very few cases increased as the cars all go into a single file. One of the tyres in the infield has been caught, the yellow top in trouble, that's the one that clouds it, car number 34. Mount Brown, he was listed down under the blue tops, but indeed races as a yellow here. There's the race leader, 181, Jerry Walker. Looking for 12 points out of this first race, and I will tell you that in uh, Formula 1's last year, it took 31 points to get into the yellow top by the end of the season. The minimum yellow was 31. So, a couple of race wins if you can get them will set you well on the way. Mick Crocker now being headed by Beres with the red top. Superstar driver carving a good line through on the inside. There he goes, Bez himself, number 260, followed by Willie Harrison. So we've got a cluster of reds all together there. Beres in 260, Harrison in two. He's going to collect Paul out, Rob Allen's car in 293. So Willie Harrison getting in the trouble once more. Keith Riley's wheels still in the thick of the action on the outside. Harrison gets back into the race. There's one white top that's uh, getting out in the action. I think he's had enough so far. Beresford looking good with the trouble for many of the whites and yellows. Looks like a clear run now for Dave Beresford. The leader is 181, Jerry Walker, Dave Beresford second in 260. Third is 286, John Tools. Looks like Mick Crocker in fourth. And Willie Harrison, despite all the spin-outs and problems, looks to be coming up into fifth place. There is Toulson in third, chasing Beresford. It looks like a good race for Beresford. Because he's got all the reds behind him. He's just now got to catch that white top of 181, Jerry Walker. Coming off now the fourth turn in the 16-lap race. Beresford's in there now looking for the attempt to put the bumper in. Good pacing track here at Sheffield, producing some excellent racing. Beresford now has got Walker in his sights. Now, of course, Beresford could get himself into trouble here as he tries to edge Walker out of the way, and that could be the chance for Tilson to get through, as Beresford is now becoming a metal sandwich there. As he tries to go in on the 181, 286 just behind him is trying to edge him out as well. He'll easily get caught by both sets of bumpers. Beresford just hammering away at the back of Jerry Walker's car as they go down into the turn. Looks almost like they're welded together. Now that is the thing, is he trying to push him into the wrecked car on the inside of uh, Joe Johnson? Just missed him. I think Beresford's temptation would be to try and put Walker's car well out of the way behind one of the parked cars. Trouble is, he might get himself in equal problems. Excellent race here at Sheffield. Beresford's got the gap on the inside now. Tulsa's looking for it as well. Beresford just, cle just clearing the 3-8 car. Riley, and he's away. Coming down the home straight, 2-6-0. Dave Beresford hits the front. Going through on the inside of back marker now, Phil Bicknell. But the race is still on because John Tulsa is in second place with a very determined drive in car 286. The two red tops first and second in a cracking heat one here at Sheffield. Beresford is opening up a lead now over Tulsa. Although he may get slowed by some of the back markers, in which case that 286 car is going to close in. Tulsa not in the top 10 last year here at Sheffield. Beresford top with 189 against Frankie Wayne was 133 points. Those are the stats from the 84 season at Sheffield. And those 189 points uh, formed a small part of those 1,704 points overall. Beresford just having to avoid the parked car as he comes back into the turn, and Toulson's closing it again. Beresford's pulling away on the straights, but Toulson seems to catch him on the bends. 
into the closing stages of the race now. The four lap marker now being put out for Dave Ferris. Four laps to go. Toulson following him all the way. Toulson is second. It's uh, difficult to see the third at the moment. Harrison has got about four cars between him and the other two red tops. Some of those are bank markers. Looks like Willie's going to get in the points in his uh, return to stock car racing. Just under three laps to go now in this absorbing race between Dave Barrisford and John Tolson. Duel in the sun, I might say, in a poetic frame of mind for the day. Barrisford with the back end coming out and uh, having inside the white tops. Two to go now. Tolson looking for the opportunity just to get that bumper in. Push Barrisford. Back of the car around, and then Tulsa would have the gap. Trouble is, though, if he tried to spin them out, he can easily get caught by the front end of the car. Beresford holding the best line there. Tulsa just blocked completely. There's one, four, five just being left and left. Dave Beresford then from Hyde in Cheshire is heading home for the win on the final lap now. Here at Olerton, he's got a three-car length advantage now with Tulsa going into the turn, so the 286 car is not going to be able to get the bumper in. Around the final bend, barring any mistakes, which I don't think are going to come from a, a driver like Beresford. It's a win. Dave Beresford wins the first race here at Sheffield, second place, number 286. John Tulson. Well, I think you'll agree that was an excellent race. John Tulson challenging all the way, and those three cars when uh, the two red tops were trying to pass Jerry Walker in the 181 white top produced some excellent action. John Tulson making a race of it, but Dave Beresford, the top rated driver in that race. Coming up with a good, so you might say they're the favourite one. Well, so Beresford records 12 points out of his first heat with uh, the man in 286, John Toulson, picking up 10 on the point scoring system. Well, here now is the official result of heat one. The top eight are as follows. First place, 260, Dave Beresford. Second, 286, John Toulson. Third place, Willie Harrison in car number two. Fourth, 181. Correction here, it's not Jerry, it's Gary Walker. Fifth place, 430, Mick Crocker. Sixth, number seven, Phil Bicknell. Seventh, 334, Dave Atkinson. And eighth place, number 299, Pete Marsh. So I think I make that four white tops qualifying from the first heat. 181, Gary Walker, 430, Mick Crocker. Seven, Phil Bicknell. And 334, Dave Atkinson. Not a bad uh, start for the whites in the opening heat. Well, let's see how this one uh, develops after the all-out action we had in heat one. The yellow is all coming past us now. 215 there, Jeff Nichols. We just saw Pete Morton go through in 132. There is 474. That's Phil Hemingway. And the Blues. Showed a lot of promise, as we all know. Once more, if you're a newcomer to stock car racing, the drivers line up in great order. The least scoring drivers tend to be the novices or those that can only race occasionally. They're the whites, then the next batch of drivers up are the yellows, then the blues, the reds, which are divided into stars and superstars. And then any champions such as national points or world champions, their silver and gold routes respectively go at the back of the grid. So that's why you have two sets of red tops, because those are the stars just going past, and those are the superstars, the top 20 or members of the top 20 drivers. See, the overall format is 20 superstars, 20 uh, red tops, of course, it is. The top 10 of superstars. The green flag drops. Vic Null is away in car 41. He's shown up well in recent meetings. He'll take a lot of stopping as he goes into the back straight. There's Peter Falding going through. One of the red tops heading onto the infield. That's Dave Meller in 304. At the back, Bert Finnegan. Milner. Sets the pace in 41. Second is 219. Pete Lowe having, having a battle with the steering wheel going down the home straight. Third place in 429 is Hare. We don't have a first name. We do have an initial P Hare in 429 coming through in the second place. And indeed now Pete Lowe being left as one of the cars has just spun out. So Vic Milner in control at the moment. Richard Ainsworth just going through in 354. There's Dave Meller, Bobby Burns, Peter Falling getting in the thick of things with his wheel up on the side of that yellow top car. And Falding in real trouble on that bend. And on the back straight, just holding himself in. In the meantime, Ainsworth has just spun out, but there is the race leader, Vic Milner, 41. Pete Falding just heading onto the infield. Ainsworth back in the race. 
So there's real problems on that third and fourth bend. Bobby Burns coming through in front of Nigel Hardy, Bert Finnegan. It's not in view, that looks like, yes, Mike Close at 199, then Richard Ains with 354, Rob Cowley on the right of the picture in the blue top, 73. Hardy and Close mixing it now. That close car borrowed by Lynn Wolfe the, for the World Championship final at Bellevue last year. Bobby Burns for Milford in Essex, just in front of that pack going down the back straight. There is the race for first and second place. Vic Milner in car 41 from Hare in 429. Well, Pete Morton in trouble there, clearing out all the tyres out of the way of everyone else, and onto the rugby pitch. Well, just going through on past the touchline, and breaking the, uh, the state barrier. Well, I don't know if they'll be taking a line out of that car. Of course, that doesn't happen in rugby league. In the meantime, 429 has hit the front. Hare is now out in front with Vic Milner second. Third place is Ian Higgins in Captain Chaos Car 29. There is the race leader, Hare, going past one of the back markers. So far, the challenge isn't developing too well. Bobby Burns is the leading red top. There you see him coming into the bend. Mike Close not too far behind. Nigel Hardy there as well. Dave Kuzak in 535. The yellow top of Richard Ainsworth just behind him. In the meantime, in, or rather, 45, Alan Scudder is doing his best to go and meet some of his fans in the crowd. Completely spread eagles on the wire ropes. So the 45 car well out of the race now after trying to take flies onto the dog track. And uh, Hare in 429 leads. Dave tapping there in the middle of those three cars, just behind Dave Taylor. They are currently half a lap behind that race leader, 429 Hare. Vic Milner making a race of it in second place. Third is Ian Higgins, fourth Mike Close. Fifth, Bobby Burns. That's the top race order at the moment. Not too far behind is Nigel Hardy, Peter Folding's car there, parked on the infield once more. Getting back into the race, he's already had one spin out. Oh, almost catching the race leader. Well, I don't know what went through uh, Hare's mind there as he suddenly saw the blue top coming loom across the track at him. I mean, so as those cars go down the back straight, you'll just be able to see in the distance there. Danny Clark's car has been abandoned. Two or three out of the race there. Well, Mike Close now closing in on the race leader, the white top, and Close is through on the inside. 429 putting up very little resistance. Close is through in the 199 car. Second is Bobby Burns in 471. These two lining up together at the back of the grid early on. Of course, at the start of the race. Close from Burns, this should be an interesting one. Well, the Reds aren't having too many problems getting past the lower order cars so far this afternoon. We've had three qualified in the top three placings from Heat 1. Now we've got two in first and second here in Heat 2. Close from Burns. Peter Folding appears to be third, but of course has spun out a couple of times. Burns second, then it's a long way back down to third place, which is still here in 429. Then Nigel Hardy in 317. John Richards is just behind him, but I have a suspicion that he's been lapped. Cowley, Dave Taylor, well placed, and Dave tapping. Apart from that, there's not much challenge. Mike Close, almost a lap up on those drivers. Looks like we've only really got two red tops or three red tops left in this race. 199, Mike Close, 471, Bobby Burns, and 317, Nigel Hardy. Yes, they are the only three remaining red tops in this race. Plenty of blues left in as the two lap marker goes out. Two laps left for Mike Close. You see Burns are really throwing the car into the turn in second place, that white and red 471 car, but he's got a long way to make up. With only a lap and a half to go, less than that now as Mike Close comes around the fourth turn. Into the final lap now goes Mike Close. And it looks like the Reds are going to dominate here. And Sheffield, in fact, we're getting a mixture at the moment of Reds and White Tops qualifying. I think that's going to change a little here in Heat 2. Some of the Blues getting through at last. 199, Mike Close is the winner. Second place, number 471, Bobby Burns. Not quite such a, a close race in the first one. That is the race winner, though, 199, Mike Close. Second place, 471, Bobby Burns. Third place, I think, 429, Hare. And fourth place, Nigel Hardy. And it looks as if... Uh, We've got plenty of blue tops through from that one, but several reds out of it. Dave Miller, Bert Finnegan, both parts on the uh, home straight there with, with Dan Clark parts on the back straight. So we're going to get some interesting cars in the consolation race, along with uh, Richard Ainsworth. 
so that's race number two. Bobby Burns just waits to go into the pits. He's second, and the race winner is number 199, Mike Close. Well, let's now take a look at the official finishing order for race two. Eight qualifiers going through to the final, and they are as follows. First, number 199, Mike Close. Second, 471, Bobby Burns. Third, in fact, was Nigel Hardy in 317. Fourth was Jim Richards in 16. We're not sure whether that's Jim or John. Fifth place was 73, Rob Cowley. Sixth was 474, Phil Hemingway. Seventh was 136, Dave Taylor. And eighth was 412, Dave Tapping. Incidentally, ninth was 33, Peter Folding. And tenth was 429, Hare, P. Hare. We don't have a first name for Mr. Hare. But indeed, he had been uh, lapped and was in tenth place, not high up in the order as I had. OK, that's the official results then of race two. Looking now for a further eight qualifying and those cars are out for heat three now in this uh, formula one willie harrison trophy meeting at Ollerton. our first trip to sheffield but uh, i'm sure after what we've seen today it will be our last frankie wayman sporting the silver roof this year as national points champion 2390 points in 84 and that was a good distance clear of john london second place in 1705 and a half for good measure john lund on the outside of wayman 53 to the top star in front of us now. Just like Rod Folding on the inside, 33. So that's the reason they've got Yellow is setting off now on the rolling lap. 62 out there, Robbie Craig. Just behind him, 485, Terry Jackson. No Harry Smith in this one. Harry, unfortunately, suffering. And Harry Smith was scheduled to go in this one, but uh, so not defend, he's out of racing uh, for the day. Holding on the Harrison John Lund just going past the camera. And a group of novice drivers at the back. The white tops to with the black crosses are the novices. And in their opening meetings, they can go at the back of the field to get out of the way rather than going on the front of the grid. So no less than four novices, 61, 3, 1, 2, 96 and 3, 7, 8. We have one there. It's like Wayne Handley, 3, 7, 8. And another one, fifth novice, and a sixth, Champion. Peter Walker, 187, and 339. And the so that should be interesting, right at the back of the pack here, with all these uh, novice graded drivers in the race. Well, the green flag's down, and the race is underway. Leading off is 536 in the whites. 536 leads going into the bend. As the car's coming through, 104 going past Warren Taylor. But the dust really is rising now as the cars come through. Indeed, I think I got the wrong name, but 104, not Warren Taylor, of course. Car. And quite a pile up on that turn, two white stalling the mid-track. 177 Alan Nichols is clear. Frankie Wayman's not too far off the pole position now. 36 rod folding in the thing of the action there with the blue tops. Just behind him is 156. And that is the car of Graham Blundell. Up and so on. This one, of course, 104 is Martin Jackson. Great bundle uh, locking up on the turn, and he's blocked Frankie Wademan in 2 1 2, the national points champion, getting in trouble. One of the novices going past, so Wademan with quite a handicap now to make up. The race leader there, 485, Terry Jackson as the yellow flags come out, they're being waved. Almost go around in single file, there's some problems around the track then. Now, as I can see it at the moment, Les Mitchell in 499 has pulled up on the home straight. There's a group of cars there on the turn. Looks like a couple of whites, plus Graham Blundell. On the back straight, three cars abandoned. Stu Gray, 274, one of the whites. 202, Richard Mason, I think, as well. And the white top with its back up against the wires. There are the cars abandoned on the... Back straight. Stu Gray and uh, Richard Mason. The green and yellow is being shown together. And the green, of course, being hidden from the driver's view by the yellow flag. 
In the meantime, one of the novice drivers has driven off the track, 3.39, pulling out of the race. Waiting for all this. The race is starting again. There's the green flag as the 485 car comes past. So there's 485, Terry Jackson out in front. Second place looks like Brian Tuffle in 155. 213, not far behind. That's Des Chandler. Then 104, Warren Jackson, 33, Rod Fal or 36, rather, Rod Fowling. Thomas got the Rod Fowling, the Rod Fowling. John Mund in 53, just behind. Stu Smith, 139. Chesterfield-based driver, not too far back. Not to be confused, of course. Have to say it again, with the world champion number one. Jackson's looking good in uh, 485. Jackson now from Chandler. Tuffman just behind him, 155. Rod Fowling in 36. Leading red top at the moment, just in front of John Lund in 53. Now Chandler's fighting his way through on the inside, and Jackson's got himself into trouble. Tuplin has also hit him. He's spun out on the turn into the fence. More problems there as one of those blue tops came through on the inside. And at the moment, Rod Farley has got one of the... the uh, you see that red and white tape on the infield? Rod Farley has got it tied around the uh, spoiler at the moment. Almost like one of these uh, advertising aeroplanes with their banners behind. Rod Farley certainly... Uh, Dash as he goes around. Oh, that streamer attached. Of course, it's going to be quite a distraction. Lenny cars behind the halfway mark in this race now. Stuart Smith, 139, just behind him. There's the race leader, Des Chandler, 213. Looking down the list from last year, Des Chandler, 37th in the points chart nationally, with 305 points. So, one of the middle order blue tops. Well, clear at the moment, though, of John Lund. You can see Lund on the right of the picture there. There's. Uh, some of the back markers, Frankie Wayman in the chasing pack, coming through the back markers after those problems early on after being caught by one of the cars on the fourth turn. That's Chandler. Stu Smith just spinning out one of the white tops, that's left. Blue top of Warren Jackson through. 2-1-3, Des Chandler. Second, 53, John Lund. Third, 36, Rod Falding. Fourth is Warren Jackson, 104. And then it looks like it could be Wayman. Holding still got the tape there. Looks like he's got that as a passenger for the rest of the of the race. Rodolison waiting for the uh, Marcus to be brought out for the last laps. And indeed, Rod Falding now slowing down. He's lost the stream and he's lost his speed. Coming up behind the 62 car of Robbie Craig. So the elder Falding out of this race. That's Chandler first from John Lund. We've had some good races so far. The result in doubt up until the uh, chequered flag. Chandler just getting past the two back markers and Lund has been blocked. Lund second place in the national points chart last year with those 1,705 and a half points. The half point also recorded by Andy Stott during last season. Stott not here today. There's Chandler in 2-1-3. Top of 4 3 4 just behind him, Wally Pitton, but he is lapped. The white's part up on the outside, including uh, Frankie Wayman, one of those cars parked on the outside line of the track. Chandler versus Lund now, with three lap marker now being held out by the starter here at Olerton. Lund now less than the car lengths behind Chandler. And once more, the back markers come into the question now because it, if one of them gets in trouble, the other one might be able to capitalise. There's Warren Jackson freeing himself from trouble. High speed racing over here at Sheffield as the cars come down the home straight now for what will be the last of time. On to the last lap. Now there's Lund's chance going in with the bumper. On, on the uh, 213 car of Chandler. Can he find the gap on the inside? But Chandler's held on. He's got the white top to contend with, but he makes it. Well, an anxious moment there on the uh, third turn of the final lap for Des Chandler as uh, the 53 car finally put the bumper in. Recovered his composure, though, and also the problem of having a white top right in front of him as he crossed the line to win. Heat three, number 213, the first blue top winner of the day. And it's Des Chandler, second place, number 53, John Lund. Let's now take a look at the top eight finishers in Heat 3, and indeed the only eight finishers all qualify for the final. First place, number 213, Des Chandler. Second, 53, John Lund. Third, 104, that's Warren Jackson. Fourth, number 96, George Daft. 
Fifth, number 434, Wally Pittam. Sixth was 312, Pete Lancaster. Seventh was 366, John Howell. And eighth was 378, Walter Handley. So plenty of white tops getting through there from fourth down to eighth. All side batch of whites. But uh, a blue, a red, another blue. And then those five whites all qualifying for the final. It'd be an interesting consolation. Foundation race, we presume, with only four qualifiers from each. But we await official confirmation of that. So this is the first of two consolation races. And setting off on the rolling lap. Indeed coming down for the, the green flag now. Now the leading whites off. 536 leads off Bob Baker. And the novice drivers with the black crosses have now already been caught up by the other white tops. So a confusing starts to the race there. 136 Dave Taylor going through. 36 Rod Fowling. 212 Frankie Wayman. 55 Bert Finnegan. So we've got the 84 and 83 National Points Champions out in this consolation. Also the Richard Ainsworth all collecting Bob Baker. Bob Baker was an early leader, but uh, he's out of the race now. Oh, some spectacular stuff once more in the first consolation race. Looks like a car's driven straight across the centre green there. I don't think the regular club would be too happy with that. Oh, look at that pile up on the turn. Brian Tuplin there in the blue. But Finnegan's in it, Frankie Wayman's in it. Well, if they can't get back in the race, that both of them are out of the entire meeting. Finnegan and Wayman, that's not a very common occurrence. So it's been a dreadful day for both uh, of those former or one present and one former National Points champion. Finnegan on the left, Wayman just to the right of him half hidden by that lamp pole. Three whites also piled up there. Richard Ainsworth is parked just on the touchline, or rather on the try line of the rugby pitch. So the top racing drivers have all been eliminated at an early stage because Rod Falling's also pulled up. And half the Blues have gone, 3-7-0. There is about to lose that rear wheel unless he's very careful. He's definitely got problems there as the yellow flanks are out waving there to stay in single file now. As the race restarts with Graham Atkinson out in front, Alan Scudden in second place, 45, the car that tried to climb onto the dock track the last time he came out. Third place, another yellow. Driving through, it looks like 314, the yellow one may be wrong. In which case it will be Andy Maltus, indeed it is Andy Maltus. Fighting a battle with Scullin. Oh, there, White Top Scullin, man, we got the first rollover. Maltus collecting Bob Baker, the 536 White Top. And the yellow flags are once more out. This race is developing into a marathon. The driver is out, Andy Maltus is okay as Bob Baker comes over to him. Have a few words with him. It looks like they're both all right, but uh, an anxious moment there as Baker and Maltus tangled on the home straight. So the cars slow down to another rolling lap. And we're gradually losing the field. Interesting to see how many are left by the end of the race. Well, we believe that Graham Atkinson in 248 is still the leader. Now, it's interesting that uh, Dave Atkinson's out in this constellation in 334. It looks as if they might have switched over to only in the top six qualifying from the heats. We haven't had an official confirmation on that, but it looks as if only uh, six cars are qualifying from the heats. One car that will go out for a qualifying position in this constellation is Frankie Wayman in 212, who nonetheless has brought the car back onto the track after looking very doubtful starter for this race. Indeed, he didn't go in that second attempt. Now, though, uh, as the race has restarted at the third attempt, he comes back into it. So, getting a lucky break there, Frankie Wayman, with that crash, giving him the chance to get the car back into the race and a possible place in the final. Indeed, with the amount of cars on the track at the moment, I'd be surprised if Wayman doesn't make it all the way through. Mind you, he's had a rough day so far. Well, the cars are setting off now on the rolling lap. as the third attempt now is made on the first consolation race. 248. Leads on. It's Graham Atkinson. Second place is Dave Atkinson. 334. Third place is one of the yellows. In fact, two yellows, fourth and fifth. So Jeff Nichols is up there, and Alan Scullin is third. They've locked together. In the meantime, putting off onto the comparative safety in the infield there. Atkinson looking pretty well clear at the moment. 248 Atkinson leads from 334, the other Atkinson, Dave Atkinson. Third now is 212 Frankie Waveland. 
136 Dave Saylor, 155 Brian Subman. That's about the race order at the moment, followed up by Kev Smith, novice in car 61. Could be on his way to the final. 215 Jeff Nichols. And that is it. Yes, and then we come to Graham Atkinson again. There's Wayman going through. Not too many cars left in this race. Frankie Wayman looking set for a comfortable route through into the final here in the first consolation race. Wayman now moving in on his prey in second place behind Graham Atkinson. He's already taken Dave Atkinson. And two four is there. In the meantime, Dave Tapping's car has suddenly come off the fence. He was in one of the top eight qualifying places early on, so it must be six from each heat, each of the heats. Atkinson from Wayneman. Third is Tuplin. Fourth is Taylor as that other blue top pulls up. And that's Dave Tapping. So Tapping's out of the race in 4 1 2. Wayman now going through on the inside of Atkinson. No problem at all. See the Finnegan car abandoned on the inside now. Dave Tapping is getting away from his own car over the fence. Might even have a chat with the cameraman while he's at it. There's uh, Frankie Waveman now, something like 40 yards clear of the second place car. That's Brian Tuplin in 156. That's the third place man you just saw there. The fourth place man, Dave Taylor, 136. Third currently is a 2 4 8 car of Graham Atkinson. Well, he looks vulnerable at the moment as Dave Taylor goes through to third place. So it's Wayman from Tuplin with Taylor third, fourth is Atkinson, fifth is Dave Atkinson, and sixth is Jeff Nichols. Those are the only cars at the moment. Atkinson's relegated down the order. Looks like he could be on his way out. But uh, they're changing round the qualifying procedures all the way through the afternoon here to cope with the number of cars that have come out for this opening day. Of the season here at Sheffield. Frankie Waver with very few problems now. He's well clear. Second. Brian Tuppen still, but it's now by virtually the length of a straight that Wayman leads. Wayman cutting through on the inside of Atkinson to lap him. That's Dave Atkinson being lapped. And Wayman is slapping pretty well up through the field. He's got Jeff Nichols in his sights next. Two one two, Frankie Wayman, not under any pressure at all now. There is Nichols just at the bottom of the pitch. There he is again. So uh, Wayman is closing all the time in two one two. Smiler Wayman, as they call him. Out in the Yorkshire, he comes from Silverstone. The first three drivers have uh, spread the sails. Which I believe is absolutely to be correct if I'm wrong. Wayman closing all the time with Nichols. He's a lap the man in the 215 car, 212, the national points champion. With a commanding lead. Coming back from the dead after he was out of the race and looked well and truly finished with the day's racing. Comes back in the third attempt at the first consolation race to lead with five laps now remaining. Moving in on Jeff Nichols. Down the back straight. Going inside the 215 car finally, so that's another car lapped. Really is a question now of how far up the field Wayman can lap. Next car on his target is uh, Graham Atkinson in 248. And Wayman just cruising around now. Four lap marker coming out. And it looks pretty conclusive. Providing Wayman keeps going, he's got a very comfortable race within his pocket. Now coming up to lap Graham Atkinson in 248. And just cuts through on the inside. Well now, how many cars left for Wayman to lap? Just in front of him is Dave Atkinson, he can lap him for a second time. Because Brian Tuplin's pulled up on the back straight. Tuplin is out. The two lap marker is showing, so there's a lap and a half left. Brian Tuplin has abandoned the car on the back straight. So that's another top rated driver out. Frankie Wayman leads in 2 on 2 into the final lap. It looks as if Dave Taylor is going to pick up second. So, last lap coming up now. Half a lap to go now for Wayman. Indeed, he's half a lap ahead of Taylor, who's just going into his final lap. Off the fourth turn for the final time, picking up the chequered flag, a very comfortable cruise through the order to win by half a lap. 
Frankie Wayman, and the man half a lap behind in second place was 136. Dave Taylor, looking for the third place man. I don't think he's across the line yet. Indeed, it's a good way down. It looks as if uh, Wayman lapped all the way through the field virtually there. So it could be Jeff Nichols in third. We'll await the official confirmation. Consolation race. George Braithwaite, Joe Jopling, Dan Clark, Dave Clark. George Braithwaite in this one from the Red Top, so plenty of talent at the back of the field as the green flag is dropped. Carl turning off his 429 Hare and 293. Rob Allen out in front, and Hare is in the front as the dust rises here at Ollerton. Well, it definitely looks as if it was uh, six qualifiers from each of the first three heats. We've been told that there will be 24 cars in total in the final, so it looks like it's the first three. Which the consolation is going through to the final. 299, getting himself the problems there. Pete Marsh, indeed, he was eighth in the first race. So, uh, obviously, it was the top six. Three each. So, consolation is Richard Mason was in trouble back on the track. Smith going through 139. Just saw Dave Miller briefly. There is the uh, 429 car. Top in second, third is 293, Rob Allen, with the yellow top just behind, looks like 499. Car spun out on the inside, looks like car in through. That's Stu Matlock coming out on the infield. More problems there, another car's out, Rob Allen's in trouble, 293, 299. Was the yellow top in trouble, Pete Marsh. And the yellow flags are out again, as the... Uh, Tapes on the infield have been brought down by Stuart Smith, the 139 driver. Pete Marsh is back in the race. Well, now let's see how long it takes before they can get this race fully underway again. Developing develop into a fairly drawn out meeting here at Sheffield. The flags being shown now. There is one of the main problems 293, Rob Allen's car across the track. Of course, one of the problems here is that since the cars aren't allowed to go too far into the second lane, obviously, there's not a lot of room if cars pile up to get out of the way. And whereas at some tracks, it just simply seek sanctuary in the middle of the center green. Here, it's restricted, which means when there is a pile-up, they tend to stay in the way. The cars being sent through there on a faster run as the green flag is readied behind the yellow. We've seen plenty of uh, flashing yellow lights and moving yellow flags here today as uh, Drivers have had to slow down into uh, single file on numerous occasions. And the green flag's dropped once more. Hare is away. Second is Howell in 366. Third is Ian Higgins in 29. Then 33. Peter Folding, 202. Richard Mason. I think, though, he may be a fair way down the order after spinning out. Dave Meller is the top red top at the moment. Mason hitting trouble on the back straight. Folding's moving through on the inside of Ian Higgins. Higgins collects the fence. So Captain Chaos moves down the order. Dave Meller challenges on the inside. Just saw Danny Clark coming through in 203. Meller, Higgins, Hare's in the middle of that with uh, several talented drivers just behind him. There's Joe Jopling in 452. As the yellow top spun out, collecting Stu Smith in the process. That was 485, Terry Jackson. Baldy coming through on the inside with the inside wheels over the curb. Gets through in the first place in front of John Howell, the temporary race leader. So that's 33 from 366. Dave Meller in third place in 304. Then comes Ian Higgins. The white top has spun out of John Howell. That advances Meller into second. And the yellows come out again. And Pete Marsh's car is abandoned on the home straight. And once more, we've got problems. Well, John Howell's car is being reversed off the back straight to allow the cars through, waiting now for yet another attempt at getting the race fully underway. There's Peter Folding, the race leader. Dave Meller lies second in 304. Ian Higgins is still up there despite his spin out. John Howell, Danny Clark, Joe Jopley. That's the order on the rolling lap. I think some of those are further down the places. A lap behind. 429 Hare is there. 92 George Braithwaite. 156 Graham Blundell. And 244, another white top. And that is the car of Mick Rogers. Those are the cars remaining in the race, not necessarily in an official order, but that is the actual order on the track. One or two of those drivers may be down the left. 
And indeed, the red's gone out. The red flag is being waved. So the cars are being called into a halt. Well, indeed, the situation was that the uh, track official has sitting on that tyre, I think, was hit by car 244 as he pulled onto the infield, Mick Rogers. So that could well be the result, the reason why the race has been stopped. We're waiting for the restart now. Well, the cars are now waiting for the restart. Indeed, the entire race is being restarted from scratch with the cars lining up in grade order. You can see the reds are at the back once more. And Dave Mellor's car, number 304. And there at the front, 429 Hare. Still don't have a first name for Mr. Hare. And on the outside is 366 John Howell. Behind them is 244 Mick Rogers. I think the track staff will be keeping well out of the way. What happened was the, the guy from the track staff went out to the fence to inspect the bit that had fallen down when Mick Rogers hit him. Well, the race is underway once more. Complete restart. John Howell leads in 366. Second is 244. Mick Rogers. Third is Hare in 429. Then comes 29. Ian Higgins. Followed by Pete. Pete Morton. Looking down my list. Pete Morton there just in view. Then Peter Falding. You just saw him coming through on the inside of the yellow top. There he is once more with the blue spoiler. And the dust really is rising now here at Ullerton. Indeed, at the moment, the uh, track staff are even uh, waving the dust out of their eyes. John Howell, first, second is 244. Mick Rogers, third is Hare in 429. Then Ian Higgins, Pete Morton, Pete Falding, Richard Mason, Graham Blundell, Dan Clark. And there they are in view. This race well down the order. There is the gap for Blundell to drive through. Clark's going to follow him through on the inside of Mason. He's about to lose quite a few places as the red tops come streaming through. There's Dave Meller. The 304 car looking a little uh, the worse for wear these days. Dan Clark looking for the gap on the inside of Blundell, trying to force him out. Meller's coming through, though. Oh, Ford engine car still got plenty of pace in it. Behind them is George Braithwaite in car 92. There you see him. It's interesting, the last meeting that was held here at Sheffield was at uh, Christmas time and they had to abandon it because of fog. But at the moment they're certainly having problems seeing things on the home straight. As you can see, the dust is rising off this shale track. One of the warmest days of the year so far. Glorious weather here at Olerton on the opening day of the Formula One season here in Yorkshire. Folding through into second place. Or is that third? Yes, indeed, it's 244, the leader. 156, Graham Blundell's hit the fence. So it's Mick Rogers leading 244. Second is Peter Folding in 33. Third is 366, John Howell. Then it's Hare in 429. Pete Morton and 244 goes straight out to the fence and straight through it. Remains to be seen whether any yellows are going to come out because uh, that is a fair amount of damage to the fence and the track staff will be rather glum around us because that's another long, long job. Obviously, we edit things down there as we go. I can tell you this uh, meeting is uh, running a little long now. It's been running for two and a half hours. Unfortunately, uh, the track staff are being well and truly worked here today as car after car is inflicting damage on the fence. And part of it fell down indeed, and that was the reason for this race having to be restarted. So uh, the track staff had to work very hard here today. Halfway stage of the race now, 299, the leader, Pete Marsh. With Pete Folding having spun out and back in the race, but he's at the back. 366, John Howell, there is Folding. Well down the order now, he's behind all the reds. So it's 299, Pete Marsh who leads. Second is 366, John Howell, the white top in second place. Third, looks like Dan Clark, although he could be a lap down. 
Marsh going through in 299. Well, that's the challenge from the white top. There's Braithwaite, but in the meantime, the white top has got through. John Howell on the inside of Pete Marsh through into first place. 366 from 299. Howell from Marsh, then Clark, 203, 429 here. 452, Joe Jopling, 92, George Braithwaite, 33, Peter Folding, and he's passed Dave Mello once more. Well, that is the current order on the track, although one or two of those drivers could be a lap down. Four laps to go now. Second place is being given to 299, it seems. As the starter goes down through the line at the moment, uh, Clark has just overtaken 299. Now the three-lap marker coming out. John Howell leads. And indeed, second is Dan Clark. And 299 appears to be marked down the order, a lap down. He's not been uh, pointed to by the starter. It's Howell from Dan Clark, nonetheless, in first and second. As the two-lap marker comes out, can the red top of Dan Clark from Rothwell in Northampton should catch up with that white top? There's Marsh being challenged now by Joe Jopling in the 452 car. And Jopling edges through on the inside. In the meantime, there is the race leader, John Howell. One lap to go, Dan Clark. Building up the rest, he tries to get through. Joe Jopling's through into third. And there is Howell. Holding on, coming into the final turns. He's just got Meller in front of him, uh, who is a back marker in this race. Meller is not going to be in the final today. Howell wins. Second is Clark. Third is Jopling. That's the unofficial top three. Looks like Hare and then Falding. But there we have it, the race winner, 366, John Howell. I think that's the only thing we can be certain of in that race. And uh, they've got another repair job to do on that fence with that car having gone straight through it on the fourth turn. The winner, 366, John Howell, and the second place man was 203, Dan Clark. That's the official, well, that's the unofficial first two. We'll give you the official five or... Uh, Six, in fact, I think it is, that's going through from this race. We keep hearing conflicting reports, together with the official finishing order of heat. And let me get back to the superstars. Well, as the cars come out for the grand final, you can see there's quite a cluster of top talent in this one. A couple of bosses, indeed, have made it all the way through to the final of this Willie Harrison Trophy here at Sheffield. As the green flag drops, it's John Richards first, second is Gary Walker, third is Mick Crocker in 4 3 -0. going through on the inside of his fellow white top car there, number seven, Phil Bicknell. Well, they haven't watched the track in the gap between this and the last of the consolation races. With the result, it's getting very dry out there, and you can see the base of the track is beginning to show through on the turns. You can see anything grey there, that's the base underneath the shale. Bicknell taking a broadside swipe. There's a the yellow car, yellow top going over. Two rollovers on the turn. Well, two cars have gone. Phil Bicknell's in the middle of it. Number seven is OK, but those two cars have both gone over. And once more, we're seeing an increasingly familiar sight here at Sheffield this afternoon. Yellow flags being waved out at the drivers, telling them slow down into single file while we sort this one out. One of the cars indeed has righted itself after spinning over. That yellow top is now just getting itself down off the fence. The yellow top trying to remove itself. 474 there. That car, that was uh, quite a spin there for 474. Phil Hemingway. So Hemingway is desperately trying to get that car off the ropes. Let's take a look at the other car that spun over. It's a white top car. The car is being righted, can't quite identify it yet, and it's 429, it looks like it's Hare's car. Oh, no, 
so a marvellous bit of action there on the turn between 429 and 474. Phil Hemingway and Hare. Repeat that we don't have a first name, unfortunately, for that driver. But they're both back and they're about to be removed from the track. It looks now as if when the race gets back underway that it will be number 16 in first place John Richards with 334 Dave Atkinson just behind plus car number 312 Pete Lancaster and 181 well as Phil Hemingway's car is uh, removed from the fence let's take another look at that crash as you can see both cars going up and that's a really spectacular action it looks as if Hemingway even went end over end well, the cars coming around on another rolling lap. The green flag once more being held behind the yellow. There it is, the race is back underway. There's car number 16, John Richards, who leads off with 3-1-2 in second place. 3-1-2, the car of Pete Lancaster. Third place is 1-8-1, Gary Walker. And Mick Crocker's just being overhauled by Peter Folding. He's already up into fourth place. Here's the blue top 33. There's Richards. Going through some of the back markers already. Richards is in there somewhere as the uh, dust begins to fly here at Olufsen. We hope this doesn't affect your viewing too much. Certainly any shots on the bends are obscured tremendously by the dust. We've done maybe a little bit of water on the track. Cars coming through Danny Clark, Bobby Burns. John Lund also in view, a car spun out up there, it looks like it's Phil Bittnell's car has been collected. Folding, certainly working his way through the order, yes indeed, it's John Richards and Phil Bittnell locking up on the turn. That gives us a new race leader then. In the meantime, an axle has been lost in the back straight. Car going out wide on the turn. And there is the car that's lost its axle. The axle is down to the left, abandoned on the back straight infield. So once more, mayhem reigns here at Olsen. As the cars are finding problems in the dust, I'm wondering if some of these drivers are having problems seeing themselves. It's difficult, uh, I'm sure enough, for you to see on your, on your TVs. Imagine what it's like for some of the drivers in the dust here at Sheffield. In the meantime, that car on the back straight is going to have to be removed. It looks like it is 312, Pete Lancaster's car. He was well placed before that incident. And another car that's been damaged, Richard Ainsworth. Well, he's lost his rear tyre there. It looks like he's also twisted the bonnet as well. Looks as if the front section of the chassis might be a bit twisted, certainly the bumper is. So Ainsworth uh, appears to be out of things. So once more we have another stoppage. I think we're averaging three stoppages a race so far. And uh, I think it's a testimony to the action. Look at the back end of that Pete Lancaster car. There's just nothing left, is there? It's the second time that a car's lost an axle here today at Sheffield. I think we went through an entire season last year without anybody losing a complete axle unit. It's happened twice today here at Ollerton. We're getting plenty of action, plenty of racing, but also plenty of restarts. Well, certainly a lot of work for somebody there on that car. No back axle, and front axle, everything sat underneath it. I certainly don't think it's going to solve a lot of problems looking under the bonnet at the moment. Right, are we starting next time round, Mr. Starter? Well, the cars come through before the starter as he readies the green flag. Right, so the leader as the race is restarted is 33, Peter Falding. And there is Falding from Rotherham just up the road. In a very handy third spot, Second place is 213, Des Chandler. Third place, Willie Harrison in car number two. It, it would uh, be a little know. ironic if Willie was winning the uh, trophy dedicated to him. It's nonetheless good to see the number two car back on the tracks. Folding leads off Chandler, then Willie Harrison. That looks like John Toulson, Frankie Wayman, Bobby Burns, John Lund, Danny Clark, Mike Close, and George Braithwaite with Dave Taylor just behind him, 136. Folding sitting in the blue dust behind it. Looks like a fine race between him and his fellow blue top, Des Chandler. Somewhere in there is Frankie Wayman. Chandler's just caught Phil Bicknell's car going into the back straight fence. Let's hope that's not going to cause another stoppage. Dan Clark just heading quite close there, and that shot's 2.03 from 1.99.
but it is the blue top car of Peter Folding who's leading up by a considerable margin over the second place man, Willie Harrison. Harrison second, third is Waveland, fourth is Burns, fifth Toulson, sixth Lund, seventh is Clark, then comes close, Braithwaite, Warren Jackson, Dave Taylor, and Joe Jopling. That's the order at the moment. Peter Farling coming inside the white top tail ender. Farling's through, it's one of the novice drivers, number 96. Peter Farling well clear. Farling indeed has something like a 50 60 yard advantage over Willie Harrison. That was Farling going through. There is Harrison. Folding going through on the inside of Mick Crocker. He's made an impact here on screen sport in recent weeks. That white top 430 car certainly uh, caught our attention a few times. Just myself, but also uh, most of the crew here. And the Folding though also making an impression that blue top is surely going to go red this year, just like his father's. But the dust. We apologise for if it is affecting the viewing. As you can see from our high-level camera, it's, uh, it's a little bit easier, but once you get down onto the turns, there's that thick fog. It's almost like an old London pea super. Peter Folding leads. Willie Harrison is there in car number two. He is not second anymore. He's dropped down the order, as you can see. Second now is Frankie Wayman. And Willie Harrison indeed is third, which gives you a measure of Peter Folding's lead. He's entering the first turn as those cars come out of the fourth. Folding halfway down the back straight, back straight. And it's a long way down to Frankie Wayman. You can see on that wide shot, there's Folding just coming out of that fourth turn with Wayman halfway through the third and fourth bends. Burns and Harrison finding the third place with fifth John Tilson, sixth John Lund, seventh Mike Close, eighth Dan Clark. And that's the end of the red tops, apart from the white and blue. Then we go on to the rest, which is Braithwaite and Jopling. He's already won one race before you know, on screen sport this season. In our programs from Northampton has been just the other winning one of those. Bit the following. Off the turn, he's looking very, very cool as the three lap marker comes out. It looks too far for Wayman to catch. Wayman had to come through the consolation race. That he won by a very comfortable margin. This time, though, he's going to catch that blue top. Peter Fowling using the blue top grading start very much as Harry Smith did last year to use as a launch pad to red top status. Peter Fowling leads with Frankie Wayman second. Third is Bobby Burns. Fourth, Willie Harrison. Fifth is John Lund. Sixth, John Tools. Seventh, Mike Close. Eighth is Dan Clark. That's the top eight at the moment here at Olsen with just two laps. Indeed, the one-lap mark are coming out. Where it's the final lap. The checkered flag being readied by the starter as Peter Farley comes around the circle. He's got the traffic in front of him. Wayman won't be able to make an assault down the home straight. It's a win in 33 for Peter Farley. Second place in 2 on 2 Frankie Wayman. Then comes Bobby Burns in 4 7 1. Willie Harrison in car number two. Behind him, John Lund in 53. Then 286, John Toulson. 199, Mike Close. And 203, Dan Clark. That's my finishing eight. Every one of them a red top, with the exception of the winner, number 33, Peter Folding. Well, we've seen some marvellous action, some marvellous entertainment in this uh, Willie Harrison trophy meeting. Willie getting fourth place in the final by my reckoning, but a good race and an excellent win for the locally based driver from Rotherham, Peter Falding. Looks like Rod, his father's going to have some opposition in the red top berth this year. Well, there is the remains of Pete Lancaster's car. He's lost axles front and rear. A lot of work to be done on that car to get it back in racing action. At least the body shell is intact. Let's now take a look at the full results of the grand final here at Olerton for the Willie Harrison Trophy. First place, number 33, Pete Folding. Second, number 212, Frankie Wayman. Third, 471, Bobby Burns. Then come Willie Harrison himself, number 2, 53, John Lund. 286, John Toulson. 199, Mike Close. 203, Dan Clark. And filling ninth and 10th, 452, Joe Jopling. And number 92, 
uh, George Braithwaite. So with the exception of the first place man, an all red top uh, finishing order in the top ten, but it was the blue top that came through, Pete Folding to win. Of course, uh, Frankie Wayman, silver, actually, uh, when he can take his national points championship into account. Otherwise, he would be red. So Peter Folding, the winner of the Willie Harrison Trophy here at Olsen. There we see some of the red tops. Joe Jopling just going past, 4-5-2, Mike Close. And John Lund coming towards us. Close on the right, 199, Lund on the left, and 53. Behind them, Bobby Burns, 471. And Bert Finnegan's come back for more after failing to finish in his first two drives in uh, the heat and consolation race. Falding leads them off, but the official leader will be 536, Bob Baker. Falding has to make a quick start. He's got to get up at the lap. The whole field to score. The whole field to win, that is. He's got to lap up to uh, eighth place to get in the points. Of course, all points scored by him in this are doubled. Bicknell, Mason and Dave Agnesson in 3-3-4 all having problems on the home straight as Baker leads off around the turn. Finnegan in 55 has got in front of Frankie Wayman. He started in front of Frankie Wayman. He's holding him off. There are the red tops. Toulson being edged out 2-8-6. Finnegan's through in 55. There's a pile up on the turn. The Gary Heap's in trouble along with, it looks like, 2-1-3 Des Chandler. Now, the question that's on quite a few people's lips at the moment is what happened to Dave Beresford? He won the first race, and we haven't seen him since. Nonetheless, plenty of star talent out in this final. You may notice as the cars go around that John Toulson, 286, has lost his spoiler. So the cars come down the straight. There's Close, Mella, Lunt. Look like Dave Tapping going through as well, 4-2. Leader is 2-1-3, Des Chandler. Second, Dave Atkinson, 3-3-4. Three, three, Pete Falding is gradually moving up the order. And there is Warren Jackson. He's not too badly placed, although a lot, most of the Reds have got past, indeed. A good way further down than... Uh, seemed at first. Well, they did put some water on the track between the Grand Final and the Grand National, but uh, we'll see if it's not done the job. This indeed takes place today after the uh, horse race at Grand National. I don't think there's any case of the last suspect, although one or two drivers may, sit, may claim that there's one or two suspects around. Des Chandler in 2-1-3, looking good coming into the turn. As you can see, that track has been worn away and the base is showing through now. Well, just as the starter went out to show the order, Kev Smith crashed into the safety fence. There you see the Smith car just about. We do once more apologise for the dust here at Ullerton. It's always difficult in the daylight meeting to get the sun beating down to keep the track and there is John Toulson without the spoiler. You can see the supports on the roof. There's Peter Falding also going through. Toulson just in front of Richard Ainsworth. One four five is parked out on the fence. And there's Peter Falding. It looks like he's going to get up into uh, some useful points. As long as he gets into the top half dozen, he'll uh, be worthwhile this Grand National race. Double. It really is getting difficult to see as the canals of the turn. So that's Chandler in 2 1 3. It really is getting difficult to tell who is who out there. And indeed, it looks as if there is a different leader being picked out by the starter. It looks as if he's picking out uh, Mike Close in 199. Well, in the dust, it's not easy to decide, but the starter definitely seems to be favouring Mike Close. Mike Close first in 199, confirmed. He's just on the right of the picture there in the yellow car with the red roof. And there he is, Mike Close. 
Well, it looks to me that uh, Chandler had the lead, but indeed it was close, confirmed by the starting marshal. Going to the final four laps of this Grand National qualifying meet here at Sheffield. These races at the end of the Formula One meetings all adding together, accumulating in the Grand National final at Rochdale later in the year. Mike Close leads at 199. Looking down the order in second place is Dave Taylor. Although I don't want to stick my neck out too far after David Des Chandler's leader earlier. Third is uh, John Lund. Fourth, Bobby Burns. Fifth, Frankie Wayman. And sixth, Bert Finnegan. That's unofficial. That could well be it. Well, there's definitely other five cars chasing. And that other front. 199, Mike Cole. Mike Close. And Mike Close picked up the win in heat two of the Willie Harris Trophy. Got seventh in the grand final, so he'll pick up some pretty good points here. He picked up 12 in his heat. And a couple more points in the final. Close now lapping and tapping. How about that for a rhyme? Unintentional, I assure you. Dave Atkinson, 3 3 4, picked up in the fence. 4 9 9 and 2 1 3 in trouble. Des Chandler. Out in the fence. There's the checkered flag. The checkered flag shows amidst what you can only describe as confusion here at uh, Sheffield because it is very, very difficult to see precisely what is going on out there. 199 is the winner, Mike Close. And so that's the final race of a very eventful day here at Sheffield. And he's uh, opened up in fine style. Well, I think you can only sum up today in one way. It's been quite a day.